War mode. Let's talk about it. We've been mentioning war mode all along our journey with Catalyst Black, and I figured today is the day. We're gonna dig into some details and talk about it more completely. I'm gonna cover three main topics about war mode. Each of these topics are full of a ton of little details. So I apologize ahead of time for how much I'm gonna be looking down at my notes here. Uh, there'll probably be a lack of fancy editing, all of that stuff, because the whole team is very heads down on getting 0.7, the next upcoming patch out the door. On that topic, I will be doing a dedicated service directive video for the entirety of patch 0.7, so you can look forward to that. But today, I just wanna talk a little bit about war mode. Three things, why war mode? What exactly does this mode mean for the game? And then two, what is war mode? What are the gameplay objectives? What can you expect out of the experience? And then three, when is it coming? Why war mode? Since the beginning, when talking about a system like Drop In, Drop Out and how it relates to Catalyst Black as a game, we've always had this vision for a game mode that would be sort of the peanut butter to the Drop In, Drop Out jelly. We called it war mode and we knew it would really just be a matter of time before we could get it into the game. So when we talk about the peanut butter to the Dido jelly, what exactly does that mean? War mode is meant to be sort of a lower octane, more strategic, longer form alternative to the current game modes that you find in the game. The primary goal is for players to get into a strong flow where they're engaged and feel rewarded for their time. War modes are larger and more freeform than classic modes, and this harkens back to some of those early talking points we had around Alltrack Valley and World of Warcraft. You can immediately participate even without having a complete understanding of all the various events and activities going on. Just moving towards an objective, taking out members of the enemy team, all of these things will reward you for your time and help your team push towards a victory. Players can learn the ropes at their own pace, and at the same time, veteran players are gonna find enough depth and strategy here that they're gonna wanna stick around and dig in deep. The long form nature of a war mode match makes it much more fitting for drop in drop out as all the individual events that make it up will reward you for your time spent playing. You can stay for an event or two, or you can play from start to finish. We just want you to feel really good about the time spent in game. All right, let's break it down. What is war mode? Well, it is a play mode that implies a variety of objectives that accumulate in a general score for your team. At any given time, there could be two to four different things you could be doing to help your team above and beyond just shooting the enemy. You get to choose how you wanna participate. Right now, we have a single war mode map and it's called Eventide. Eventide is a hub and spoke style map, still very much in the prototype stage as far as our art goes. War mode maps can be expected to be larger in scale, more asymmetric and more sort of in world than our classic game mode maps. Creatively, Eventide is in the midst of a conflict surrounding the harvest of catalytic resources. Both teams are vying for those resources and ultimately the winning team is triumphant in controlling those resources. What are these resources? Well, they're stars falling from the sky. Those stars are full of catalytic power. You'll wanna acquire the various forms of this resource and hoard it for your team. How do you win Eventide? Ultimately, winning Eventide is only possible by winning the final event in the game called the Final Harvest. This means that a team that's behind, even at that point, can still turn the game around. More on the final harvest event in a bit, but this event is triggered by the first team that reaches a score of 25,000 points. How do you get points? Well, here are the main ways. You can capture and hold outposts. You can win major PVE or PVP events. You can complete activities such as bringing back shards to your outposts or your base, or you can kill major bosses around the map. And then lastly, just taking out enemy players or NPC creatures around the map. Every outpost you own will grant a steady trickle of points toward your team. There are six outposts in Eventide, two on each team's side of the map, one in the center north, and then the central fortress. The central fortress is not only a great strategic point to own due to the leg up it'll give you in other events, it will also grant you a larger trickle of points than traditional outposts. Outposts also serve as the deposit location for the central collection mechanic of Eventide with shards. Players can collect shards from around the map and return them to their nearest outpost or to their home base. These shards can be found on the ground, you'll see them on the mini map, or they are also dropped when defeating the golem monsters on the map like the Keepers or the Core Behemoth. You can carry multiple shards and upon picking one up, you'll get an arrow pointing you to the nearest outpost you can turn in there or any other outpost that you own to score points for your team. 
Each team will start the match with two Imperial Guardians protecting their northern and southern outposts. You can take these guys down and you'll get a large number of points while also opening up the outpost for capture. The Imperial Guardians will never respawn. A short time into a match, maybe around one third the total score, both teams will spawn a Harvest Overseer in their base. Like the Guardians, the Overseers can be defeated once and will offer a large point bonus to your team. Both the Guardians and the Overseer are tanky NPCs, but they will eventually be taken down by the enemy if your team doesn't protect them. Lastly, the Core Behemoth is the large neutral boss that will spawn around two thirds of the way through a match. If you take this guy down, he will grant a large number of points and also drop several Star Shards on the ground for potential turn in. One quick note, watch out for boss steals. There will be people hiding behind rocks trying to get that last hit. Just keep it in mind. Just a couple other small things before jumping into the actual war mode events. First up, creatures, NPCs. There's lots of those little Grenu hunters roaming about, but now they can do a variety of new things like they can burrow, their AI is a bit smarter, they'll back off if they're low on health, they'll spit at you from range, a lot, a lot of fun things. And then of course, those little golem monsters, we call them rubble. These guys will now drop heavy ammo for you if you take them out. And then lastly, speed crystals. There are large pink crystals found in key areas of the map that will grant players who run near them a lengthy speed bonus. This bonus is gonna last until you fire your weapon or you take damage. Okay, all of this is subject to change, just like my hoodie, it's way too hot in here. And I'm not going back and redoing all that footage, but there are four main events that run through Eventide War Mode. They go in this order and they will repeat if necessary. First, Wild Moon. Second, Arena. Third, Wild Surge. And then fourth, Flashpoint. Of course, once the game reaches 25,000 points, like I said earlier, it'll kick off the ultimate event, the final harvest. All major events are timed and have a win condition. In addition to large point rewards, this win condition will determine how many conquest points each participating player will receive. That's a sneak peek on the 0.7 patch notes. Conquest points, if you wanna learn more about them, you have to hit the service directive video coming <laughs> later this week. I gotta make that one too. Uh, but that's a revamp to our current quest system. During this event, stars will fall from the sky in a random region of the map. Players must compete to capture these shards for their team. The team that captures the most fallen stars will win the event. All vision ranges are reduced, while movement speed is increased. During this event, the five players with the highest current kill streaks on each team will become Paragons, receiving a buff to their health, damage, and their size. They will be teleported to a small arena island off the northwest of the map, and here, both teams will duke it out until only one team remains. Paragons do not regain health while in the arena, but they can still use healing abilities. Okay, a couple of details. There are a few variations to this arena event. The default arena variant will reset all participating players to zero primal energy and zero heavy ammo. Two large crystals though will spawn in the arena. If you take these crystals out, each one will drop six massive primal energy pickups. And of course you can fight over those <laughs> as you see fit. The heavies variant to the arena will reset all players to zero primal energy, but grant full heavy ammo. Only one large crystal will spawn in this variant. Lastly, the primals variant will grant full primal energy to every participating player while resetting their heavy ammo to zero. And of course, no large crystals required in this variant because everybody's gonna turn into a primal. When this event starts, a semi-random outpost will become the source of a growing surge of catalytic energy. The team that has possession of this outpost at the end of the surge is victorious. Nothing else counts. The surge, at least for now, will be about two minutes long and like Wild Moon, all players' vision is reduced and movement speed is increased. Just like the arena, when this event kicks off, the five players with the highest current kill streaks on each team will become Paragons, gaining size, health, and damage. The first team to defeat all enemy Paragons will win this event. Paragons on both teams must stay near the Central Fortress or risk losing their Paragon status. The bounds of the Central Fortress include the land to the left and right sides of the fortress itself. On the left side, this reaches to the connecting bridges, and on the right side, it reaches to the mountain ridges. Once either team has surpassed 25,000 points and any active events have wrapped up, the final harvest will begin. During this time, the team that currently owns the majority of outposts will rapidly drain points from their opponent. The Central Fortress will count as two outposts, 
effectively serving as a tiebreaker. When either team reaches zero points, the match is concluded, and the team with points remaining wins total victory in the match. This phase is entirely about outpost control. Even if a team is significantly behind in points when the phase begins, if they can maintain the majority of outposts and drain the opposing team, they can make a comeback. Although points can still be earned from nearly everything during this phase, except of course owning outposts, shards and many creatures will stop spawning as soon as the initial announcement is made, and new events will not trigger. In other words, players can still finish off what they were doing, but all action shifts towards outpost control. And that's war mode. That's a lot. <laughs> it's really fun. And uh, we think there's a little bit of something in there for everybody, whether you're a PvPer, a PvEer, a socialite, you name it, I think you're gonna enjoy it. Some of you may recall in Discord, I asked you a while back, would you prefer a Wormo that was much more polished but took a lot longer to get out the door versus a Wormo that was a little more rough around the edges, still got our initial promises and premises out the door, but uh, maybe risked some bugs and some bumpiness along the way. And the resounding feedback was like, get it out earlier. This thing's coming in 0 0.7. <laughs> That's this week. Uh, so it's a lot, we've been busting it. We're really excited to get Wormo into your hands, 0 0.7. It wasn't supposed to be this early. <laughs> that being said, there are a lot of things to keep in mind. This mode is going to likely change a lot. The objectives, the events, the availability, the timing. We, we think that even though this mode is uh, accessible to a wide variety of player types, it's possible that it fits best with players who've had a little bit more experience with the game. Like maybe we should have a, a gear requirement to access the mode just because it's a lot to take in. But we want your feedback. Is the mode overwhelming? Are we wrong about our thesis or our premises for drop in, drop out? Should there be a gear requirement for accessing war mode? Uh, we need to learn from you guys. And that's the thing I'm most excited about is getting it in your hands as early as possible. We think this mode is a ton of fun and a really good fit for the creative promises of Catalyst Black. But we wanna hear from you. So here's how this is gonna go down. We'll be dropping off war mode and 0.7 in the hands of the agents of the Secret Service. If you don't know about our Secret Service, you can find out more on our website to be our frontline testers. And then if things don't go horribly wrong there, we'll roll it out to our Geo Beta regions shortly thereafter. That being said, we do have some switches in place that will allow us to shut the mode off entirely. If something creeps up that completely breaks the game or surprises us in a way that we can't anticipate. We good? <laughs> I know I'm good. I, I, I'm not going back to redo any of this footage, so I hope it's all good in there. Stay tuned for the full service directive video for patch 0.7. We're gonna cover everything. If you've been following us on social media, follow us on social media, you know we're bringing voice chat to the game. We're bringing pings to the game in 0.7. We're bringing new weapons to the game in 0.7. Don't tell anyone I told you that. Let's get into it in the next video, and until then, Never settle for the lesser evil.